Good construction contracts are essential for project owners who want to complete their projects on budget because it's often the case that the contractor's promise about uh, the cost of the project or the budget that they're going to hit isn't worth the paper that it's written on if there are certain underlying defects either in the words that are used in the construction uh, contract uh, or the contractor's proposal where they're making this promise about price or with the project itself. And having the right words on uh, the paper, the right kind of construction contract terms that address budget and address cost, those you know right words, those legally operative words on paper constrain a contractor's ability to charge more. Now, it's totally counterintuitive for most project owners when they leap out into a new construction project to think that if the contractor gives them any piece of paper that says, you know, a million dollars or two million dollars, whatever, you know, it is the, the budget that they're going to hit their projection about, you know, what the cost is going to be, or, you know, even if they style it as a guaranteed maximum price or some sort of a fixed price or stipulated sum, it's really counterintuitive for most owners, homeowners, uh, you know, and other project owners to understand that it's pretty easy for the contractor to be let out of that promise if what's going on on the project, um, it would make it unfair to force the contractor to adhere to that budget. Take one example. If you hire a contractor before the architect does its drawings and there really is an incomplete definition of the work that's going to be performed, it really doesn't matter if a contractor gives you a number. They could give you a million or two million or three million or ten million or whatever number you want to hear. If there isn't a complete drawing set that the contractor can look at and say, okay, that's what I'm going to build. And so this is my price for that work. Uh, you know, most people can understand that it's easy for a contractor to be a lot out of that promise, right? At the very least, everybody should understand that unless there's a good description of what it is the contractor is going to do, what the scope of the work is, it doesn't feel fair for them to be stuck with, you know, a price. You know, what if the architect, for example, designed a home that was, you know, far more expensive than the contractor was planning to build? It wouldn't be fair to stick them with, uh, the original price that the you know homeowners wanted, right? And that's an extreme example. You know, taking a design that's completely not finished, um, but there are you know shades of gray. There's a sliding scale here because if you've got a design that's 90% finished but not 100% finished, uh, even though the contractor isn't going to be able to get entirely out of some of the pricing promises uh, that they've made to the owner, um, there is wiggle room for them to say, well what I told you before turns out to be different than what materialized on site. Uh, you know, and there are um, lots of different ways that, you know, contractors, the, the honest kind and then, you know, the other kinds, you know, will put words down on paper that sound right to an owner um, and makes the owner feel like they've got some assurance of pricing, but they're really not uh, going to be bound to those promises, you know, and in 60 seconds, I can take a look at a contractor's proposal and I can have a pretty good sense for whether we're dealing with a contractor that's giving themselves tons of wiggle room to increase the price on a homeowner or, or another project owner or whether, you know, it looks like it's a reasonable estimate, you know. Um, there's a concept in construction contracts known as allowances. An allowance is a placeholder. It basically is the contractor saying that like, if the whatever it costs me to you know buy the lumber or you know to get the countertops or you know the kitchen appliances whatever that number winds up being is what the owner is going to pay uh, and there's certainly a time for there to be allowances you know in in a, a contractor's pricing uh, as a matter of fact it'd be unusual for there to not be some allowances in most construction contracts but you know there's a lot of times where contractors have a heck of a lot more allowances in their pricing. Uh, then is appropriate because they shouldn't have to guess at what the pricing is if you know the scope of the work is sufficiently detailed and you know architecture and engineering drawings and other things where it's fair to expect the contractor to give more firm pricing you know not the allowance pricing that can move up or down and so uh, you know that's just one of a dozen concepts you know allowances that most homeowners are not going to realize are critically important they're just going to look at the big number summed up at the bottom and they're going to say well that's 
the amount that I want to spend, so things must be good, without understanding that there are, you know, other words in contractors' proposals, you know, ma certain magic words, certain things that may or may not be there, you know, and then if there isn't, you know, a reasonably complete thought off the paper about what the project is going to be and how well developed the scope of work is, most homeowners don't understand that a contractor can often be let out of, um, you know, what looks to uh, a project owner that is only an occasional consumer of design and construction services as a relatively firm promise to hit a certain price point. Um, there's also a bunch of doctrines of law in Illinois and other states that will be very counterintuitive to most uh, project owners. Um, there's a concept in Illinois and many other states known as betterment. And betterment basically says that you don't get something for nothing. So if an architect uh, you know, does a plan and, you know, the structural engineer working for the architect neglected to show a steel beam, uh, you know, in the drawings uh, that turns out is going to be necessary to make the project stand up, uh, you know, regardless of what pricing the contractor gave you, um, you know, which is likely not going to have that steel beam in it, the contractor is not going to owe you all that steel for it. You're going to wind up paying for it. Uh, and it's not the case that you're necessarily going to be able to go back to the architect and say that you need to pay for this steel beam or, or even the you know, structural engineer because the, the reason that you need the beam isn't because the architect and the engineer left it off the drawings. It's because that's necessary just due to the laws of physics to make the, the house stand up. And so, you know, there's a lot that goes on underneath the construction contracts, underneath the contractor's you know, pricing uh, proposals that are really going to drive what a court or an arbitrator would would require a homeowner to pay for their project. And this is why, you know, it's very hard for an, an owner of a construction project to, you know, really have any realistic estimate, expectation of hitting their budget unless things are correct on the project, things have progressed to the right point, and then the right kind of words bind it all up in a construction contract uh, where you know the, the homeowner can have reasonable you know certainty that the contractor isn't going to have the easiest time wiggling out of some of the price promises uh, that they've made. I'll also just touch on very briefly that uh, Illinois law and the law of most states are, are keen to see the subcontractors that are actually doing the work get paid. And so if you are a homeowner, and you have a dispute with a general contractor, even if you're right, even if something happened on the project that would allow you to not pay the general contractor some money that you uh, don't believe uh, you owe them, even if you're right, that doesn't mean that you as a homeowner don't have a legal obligation to make sure that the subcontractors underneath the general contractor are getting paid for their work. And there is a process that's spelled out in Illinois law about everything that a homeowner or really any project owner needs to do in order to make sure that the subcontractors who are doing the work get paid and you can lay your dispute, you can lay the, uh, the loss at the feet of the general contractor that uh, is responsible for the problem. But a homeowner that doesn't understand what Illinois law says about the payment process, about what paperwork they need to collect, what the content of that paper needs to be like, and what actions they need to take to make sure that the subcontractors are getting paid. A homeowner that doesn't understand that could wind up uh, you know, having to pay subcontractors lots of money um, you know, when they bring mechanics lien claims or other kinds of claims, even if the homeowner has a legitimate reason to you know short pay the general contractor so uh, you know if you want you know predictable outcomes if you want you know good work for a fair price if you want to achieve project completion in the vicinity of the budget that you're targeting you as a project owner really have only one hope and that is a good construction contract which is an essential component of every project where a homeowner wishes to complete their project on budget.